Jeremiah chapter 17. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with the point of a diamond, engraven upon the table of the heart. Now we say tablet. The Ten Commandments were written on the table. They're tablets. Upon the horns of your altars, plural. It's not the altars that were in the temple. And you're not going to erase those sins. You're not going to get rid of those sins. And yet there's only one thing that will cleanse the sins of men. That's the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And when David, Solomon, and all them died, they went to Abraham's bosom, waiting for the day that the Lamb of God died. And shed God's blood. And what God's recording through Jeremiah is here, Judah is sinned a sin. You know what? There's no repentance. There's been no repentance. So it's not going to be covered. It's not going to be washed. And when these people die, they're going to die and they're going to end up in hell. While the children remember their altars, plural, and their groves by the green trees, Upon the high hill. It's all false worship. And this false worship is done. And has not been. Uh, repented of. Has not been quit. It's going on. It's still going on. And when you sin and you don't repent. Your sins are not washed. And for the born again. Bible believing Christian. If you sin against God. And we have 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to cleanse us, uh, uh, cleanse us and to uh, uh, forgive us. And I'm misquoting that verse. Hold on. Christians will die in unconfessed sin and it will be wood, hay, and stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. If it's not put under the blood of Jesus Christ. All oh, my mountains in the field I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil. The Babylonian army. And thy high places for sin. Again, that's the worship of false gods. Throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. God's marked you as a sinner. God has marked you as an offender of God. I don't care if you're of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That rich man that went into hell, he, he said, Father Abraham. That didn't get him out of hell. Don't go crying to God, oh, I'm a child of, of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and a particular tribe. That's not going to get you out. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I will cause thee to serve thy enemies, Babylon, in a land which thou knowest not, Babylon. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. When they die, they go into hell, and they burn forever. Because their sin is written with, with a pen of iron, it's not been cleansed, it's not been washed. It hasn't even been confessed. Thus saith the Lord. Cursed be the man. That trusted in man. Politician. Republican. Democrat. Pastor. Preacher. Scholar. Educator. And make his flesh. Make his flesh his arm. In other words. You're trusting in human. Whose heart departed from the Lord. My priest. My mother. My father. For he shall be like the heat in the desert. And shall not see when good cometh. 
but shall inhabit parched places in the wilderness, dead places, unproductive places, in the salt land. Salt land, that's where things are dead, not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. So Titus 2.13 says that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. To throw Jehovah Witnesses out the window. For he shall be as a tree planted by water. That spreads out her roots by the river. And shall not see when the heat cometh. Verse 6. But her leaves shall be green, light. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. She's printed by a river. Jesus said he is the water of life. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So when you run to, to uh, Psalms chapter 1. You have this illustration. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's the same thing Jeremiah said. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, trusting in man, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In the law he does meditate day and night. He shall be a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like a che, the worthless part, which the wind driveth away. So there's that. You got a match here. Scripture with scripture. I just follow my heart. Let my heart guide me. The heart is deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. And who could know it? Jeremiah 17 9 is a verse that one should know. As a reference. Because in the world that I let my heart lead me. My heart told me so. And where scriptures say out of the heart is adultery, murder, theft, stealing. The heart is our source of who we're not. And we're not holy. The heart is wicked. I, the Lord, search the heart. Uh-oh. You mean that desperately wicked thing God searches? You see, God doesn't search the outside of man. He searches the inside of man. I got somebody upset one time and I said, you know, any fool can put a suit on. A suit and tie and all that. I said it can be as wicked, as wicked as the devil. Oh, you're, you know, making reference, you're making fun of pastors and all. It's like, whoa, I wasn't talking about pastors, I was just talking about suit in general. And anybody can go to a, anybody can go to a thrift store and buy a suit. Politicians and used car salesmen have suits. And those trades are known for liars. I search the heart, I try, try to wait range. What guides you? What directs you? Even to give every man according to his way, according to the fruit of his doing. Galatians 6 7, you're going to get what you deserve. As a partridge sits on the egg and hatches him not. So he that gives riches, not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, death, and his end shall be a fool. There's that man. Oh, I, I got everything. I got abundance, and I'll build. I'll tear everything down. I'll rebuild. And I'll be. I'll build bigger and better. God said, "Thou fool, thy soul is required tonight." Who are you going to leave your stuff to? Because you ain't taking it with you. A 
glorious high throne from the beginning is a place of our sanctuary. God through. Oh Lord, the hope of Israel. There's that blessed hope again. There's the hope. Scripture with Scripture. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and Titus 2.13. Our blessed God and Savior, blessed hope in Jesus Christ. You know, Jehovah Witnesses, when Paul preaches, they fall out the window and they die. And there's no life in them to come back to life. All that forsake thee shall be ashamed. I guess Demas would be ashamed. He forsaken the Lord. All the churches today that have turned to the world. The Bible says, study show thyself approved unto God and work with that needs not to be ashamed. How do you not be ashamed? Study the word of God and find out what's right and what's wrong. And do that which is right. And don't do that which is wrong. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. What's that? Well, what happens to the earth? It melts with a fervent heat. It goes bye-bye. Everything for your forsaking the Lord it goes, it goes with the earth going. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. And Jesus said in John chapter 4, I am the living waters. I am the water of life. Again, tell the Jehovah Witnesses, you're wrong. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me. And I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. That's kind of mockery. I mean, we didn't go to the farmer's market today. I was, I was kind of saying, Oh, you know, the preacher didn't show up today. I wonder where the word of God was this morning. Mockery. They're not listening to the word of God. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. Jeremiah said, I didn't want this. Jeremiah did not call himself. Neither have I desired a woeful day that's coming of destruction of Judah. Jeremiah said, I don't appreciate the message God's given me. I don't appreciate delivering the message that God gave me. Preachers and churches today, they don't appreciate the true words of God, so they give you fluffy and greatness and butterflies and Father's Day and Mother's Day, and they give you all kinds of fruity, tooty, wonderful crap. And they don't want to teach you that repentance. They don't want to tell you that. Turn from your sin. They don't want to tell you about wood, hay, and stubble. They don't want to tell you about a place called hell. Because that don't fill the churches. People don't want to serve the Lord because they look. Look. Every time you do something for the Lord, they call the cops. They give you a hard time. They yell and scream. I don't want to be yelled at. I don't want to be screamed at. All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I want a fluffy, fairy tale, great, and all in the end, and happy ever after. That don't come until you live for the Lord and suffer for the Lord. Because if you don't suffer for the Lord, you're not going to get inherited. You don't take a beating for the Lord, you're not going to get rewards. And to get a fairy tale. Everything's hunky dory, and you run off with the prince. In the eternal life, you have no rewards, you have no crown, and you didn't get no inheritance. If you live a wonderful, great life of no hardship and no problems, you're not going to have a good eternal life in New Jerusalem. 
And if you suffer and, and you take a beating and, and listen, all that Jesus Christ did who was holy and right and God himself. At the ends of the days of Jesus, they nailed him to the cross. The, the apostles outside of John all died violent deaths. And we read the other night about Paul and the perils of the fall. Christian life is not to be hunky-dory, wonderful, great, and love. The Bible says, marvel not if the world hates you. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope. There's that hope again in the day of evil. And what's the day of evil for Jeremiah? This day that he keeps preaching, Babylon's coming. And you know what happens to Jeremiah when Babylon comes? He's in jail. There's no bread. There's no water. Babylon comes, destroys the city. And the Babylonian army approaches the jail where Jeremiah is, opens up the door, takes him out, sweeps the dust off him, gives him some food, and sets him free. Now only God could do that. The day of evil coming for the Christian is the judgment seat of Christ. Because no Christian, no Christian is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ a 100% blessing 100% without failure there will be wood wood hay and stubble for every Christian we will see people at the great white throne judgment that we should have gave to the gospel track we should have spent a little more time in and we didn't let them be confounded that persecute me there's that not, in the Old Testament, there's that not love thy neighbor, love thy enemy. Jeremiah says, hey, Lord, give me the best, and those that hate me, persecute me. That's not our prayer today. That's not who the Christian is today. But let not me be confounded. Lord, my enemies, confound them, but not me. Let them be dismayed. But let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. That's Jeremiah talking about his own people, the Jews. Do you know what a standard you have with Jeremiah than you have with Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul was whipped and beaten by the Jews. His life was sought by the Jews. He was imprisoned by the Jews. And he says... I love them. I pray for them. I'm going back to Jerusalem. Oh, no, you're not, Paul. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not, Paul. Oh, yes, I am. Paul, you go back to Jerusalem. Bye, Lord. <laughs> Jeremiah's had it with him. Thus saith the Lord unto me. Here we go. Ready? Go stand in the gate of the children of the people. Here's the street preacher. And when I street preach, you're turning people away. Jeremiah is standing in the gate. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. And it says in Proverbs chapter 1. One twenty, Proverbs one twenty. Wisdom cries without; she utters her voice in the streets. There's the street preacher. She cries in the chief places of concourse, the openings of the gates. Back to Jeremiah. There he is. People come up to me. Why are you here to at the farmers market? Why are you here every? Because there's business here. There's people here. People we see every week and people, new, new faces we haven't seen. That's a street preacher. Oh, you're turning people away. 
I guarantee Jeremiah turned people away. I guarantee they got upset. Again, Jesus street preached and he got the cross. Paul street preached, uh, he lost his head. Peter street preached and they nailed him upside down on the cross. Thus say the Lord, go and stand in the gate of the children of the people. Whereby our kings of Judah come in. Whoa. Royalty. And by the which they go out in all the gates of Jerusalem. Not just one gate, all the gates, Jeremiah. I don't care if it's the royal gate. You go there and you preach the word. And say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Ye kings of Judah, all Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that enter in by these gates. I guarantee at the farmer's market, Daytona, I guarantee there's been people of authority of Daytona Beach I preached to. I don't know, probably don't even know. I may have preached to the mayor or mayors. I've heard the, the DJ every once in a while, yes, everybody welcome somebody important. And then I'll come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved, old sinner. <laughs> Let's say, Lord, take heed to yourself. Bear pay attention to what you're doing and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Now, we're going to look at the Sabbath. This is not the church age. We don't honor the Sabbath, but the law honors the Sabbath. And this is one of the violations why God is angry. Not only is God angry with the, with the children of Israel for the false gods, and the false worship in the groves and the high places, but they did not rest on the Sabbath day. They didn't rest, rest on the Sabbath day. They didn't rest on the Sabbath year. They didn't rest on the, on the feast of the Sabbath. When there were feasts and there would be Sabbaths, they worked, they worked, they worked. And even Nehemiah, when they've gone back from Babylon, they're in they're in Jerusalem. Even on the Sabbath day, they're, they're, they're like, oh, hey, listen, we better get right because this is why we're in Babylon. They didn't carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath. You couldn't carry nothing out of Do the seven day Adventists, do they carry things on their, out of their house on a Saturday? Do they put things in their car on a Saturday? They want to be under the law? Neither do you any work. But how will you, thank God you're not under the law. But how will you the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers? But they obeyed not. So here's another hit for the Judah. Here's another hit for Israel. Another thing they have disobeyed God. The Sabbath. The Sabbath is not church age doctrine. But it's coming back in the tribulation period. Woe be to the pastor that don't believe that. Because Jesus said in the tribulation period. Pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath. Why? Because airplanes will be grounded. Which means the law is coming back. For some foolish pastors don't know what they're talking about. But they obeyed not. Neither inclined their ear. They wouldn't listen. But made their neck stiff. They fight hard. That they might not hear. They did not want to hear. Nor receive instruction. They did not want to obey. They did not want to know. That's today's church. That's the world today. And it shall come to pass if you diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but to howl to make it holy Sabbath day, to do no work therein. And they won't listen. 
Then shalt thou enter the gates of the city, kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David. They didn't listen. There is no throne of David today. There will be when Jesus comes, riding chariots and on horses. They, their princes, the men of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem. And this city shall remain forever. It gets torn down. It gets burned. It gets destroyed. They did not listen. I'm telling you, I said this last night, and I said this the other night. I believe the rapture is not, son, go get your bride. I know you've been waiting for her. Go get your bride. Uh, I think I think it's more like, I can't believe them. I can't believe what they're doing down there. Son, go get them. Just get them out of the way. Can't believe. They are entangled themselves with the world. That the devil's inside the church and Jesus Christ is standing outside the door knocking. And Jesus, son, when you go and get your church, you're going to find many of them in bed naked with the devil. In adultery. That's our church age. And yet they think, oh, what a great church we are. What a great people we are. How great we are. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, from the places about Jerusalem, from the land of Benjamin. That's inside Judah. And actually, Jerusalem is actually in Benjamin. It's on the outskirts of Benjamin along the borderline of Judah. When you go to Joshua, and from the plain, from the mountains, from the south, bring in burnt offerings, sacrifices, meat offerings, incense, burnt sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. That's the millennium. Because they're not doing that today. There is no temple there, and they don't know who they are. So evidently it was a big failure. And like I said, in Nehemiah's time, they were violating the Sabbath. And then when Jesus comes, they're so particular about the Sabbath. All oh, the disciples are rubbing wheat together. And yet you got a woman caught in adultery, the very act, and it may be one of you. And that you have actually crucified God in the flesh. While looking forward to Calvary. While being Christian. <laughs> I say that tongue in teeth. You know what they said? When they came to the death of Jesus. Not on the feast day. At least there be an uproar. Now after we, after we crucified Jesus. Then we're going to go have the Passover. You murderers. But if we will not hearken unto, but if ye will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, make it holy, and not to bear a burden, work, even entering through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof. Guess what Babylon does? Guess what Titus will do in 70 AD? And shall devour your palaces of Jerusalem. And it shall not be quenched. I guess by the end of Jeremiah, I guess the people did not obey God again. And throughout Jeremiah, God says, listen, this is what I want you to do. No, nope, we're not going to listen. Thus saith the Lord. We don't care what saith the Lord. You know, the Bible says that Christians should, we don't care what the Bible says. You know, you ought not to be doing this in the church, you know. We don't care. We want it. You know, the church is not the building. It's the, oh, well, shut up. We don't want to hear it. The church in the world is in the same condition as Jeremiah. 
we and they don't want to hear it. But we're doing fine, we're great, we're rich, we're wonderful, and we have need of nothing. Wait till the next time we hear about the Queen of Heaven coming up. 